If it's a shit place to work, your employer branding is a lie. So I saw that statement about 10 foot high at the Empel Employer Branding Festival in Belgrade back in October. And that was part of a talk given by Max Hunter, Max's Chief Joy Officer at his Business Motivators at Work. So we're gonna talk about employee engagement and employee experience, and we're gonna talk about the connection with employer branding. Let's get on with the chat. Hi, Max, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you very much. Greetings yeah, from sunny Hamburg today. Oh, brilliant. Well, it's it's a less sunny than usual North London today, which is quite a breath of fresh air, as it now got rid of January, got that out of the way. <laughs> it felt like it was January the 56th, I think, by the time by the time it's the end of the month. But yeah, thanks for joining. It's great to great to finally get you on onto the onto the pod. Yeah, we met in in Belgrade back in October. Seems like a long time ago. So you were talking as well as I was. So your talk was brilliant. So yeah, it just had to get you had to get you on the pod. Should we start off with a bit of an introduction about yourself? Tell us a bit about yourself, Max. Of course, with pleasure. Yeah, it was good to meet you in Belgrade. I think we shared a bit of Liverpool and United banter. I think we did. Was... We did. <laughs> You dad jokes shared here and there. Maybe we could start oh, dad jokes YouTube channel. <laughs> absolutely, the, the 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 best dad jokes around for sure. <laughs> best drug worst. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Hi everyone. I am Max Hunter. First of all, that is my real name, by the way. I do get asked that sometimes. I'm a, and I <clears throat> am chief joy officer and co-founder of a company called Motivators at Work. Yeah, it is actually a real title. Um, at the moment, what we do, especially my business partner Judith and I. We go around helping teams to connect, build trust, and help co-create a better future together. So that's a lot of what we do about helping teams right now. But the chief joy officer thing was real. I was the chief joy officer <laughs> on the exec of a company in Zurich called Loy Logic. I did that for two years where I actually met Judith. And if you want to hear more about that, I'm sure we'll talk a bit about it today. But there is also one of the talks I gave specifically about my Chief Joy Officer role in the comments or the description here, I believe as well. Yeah. I yeah. originally from Manchester, England. I worked in business for 15 years in marketing and retail and customer data, taking me everywhere from Boots the Chemist in Nottingham to, to London, to Zurich. And now, as I think I mentioned before, I'm based in Hamburg. So it's good to be on your podcast finally, Chris. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, love it. Thanks very much. Thanks for us. Well, it talked about, yeah, so we're both in Belgrade at the Empful Festival Employee Branding Conference. And uh, yeah, it was my first time in, in Serbia, first time in Belgrade. Great fun. And you had the, the joy of finishing the conference at the end of the day, didn't you? Which is always a bit of a tough ask, isn't it? But, but it was great talk, you know, and you, you brought great energy to, to, the, to, to the conference for the end of the day. And something that you said, this is why I was like, wanted to get you onto the podcast. Something you said really kind of struck a chord with me. You had in big, if it's a shit place to work, your employer branding is a lie. So that definitely got some chuckles around, around the, the, the room, but also kind of nods of acceptance of going, yeah, you, you know, I think Max is absolutely spot on. So. Tell us a bit more about that. You put it out on massive, I don't know how big it was on screen, but you know, made a big point of it. So why, why that, why that, that, that sentence? Yeah, you know, I think each kind of letter was as big as my head and that takes quite yeah. some doing. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting that, because actually a lot of the LinkedIn posts that came afterwards about the conference from people I didn't even know really had that as an image in their post. And there was quite a lot of chat yeah. about it. We intentionally try and put something Controversial is not quite the right word, but put it like, call it like it is in as many yeah. of our talks as possible. And I do speak at quite a few conferences. And whilst kind of batting about the ideas with Judith Raymaker, my business partner, about what, what's the message about employee experience, employer branding. And mm -hmm. there was a, yeah, we talked about, of course, the, the interdependency and you can't have one without the other. And maybe typical business bullshit, bingo words, who knows? We, it was actually Judith. I think so. Judith, if you're watching this, a big credit to you, who I think ultimately came up Last with that line during our brainstorming. And it was a part was like, can I say this? Yeah, of course I can. So yeah, it's <laughs> stuck. And it really, I think, sums up this interdependency between employee experience. So what's it like to work here really? And employee branding, which is what do we tell people it's like to work here? Yeah. 
And of course, in this in this world of authenticity, uh, people sniff out sniff out the BS anyway. If it's a shit place to work, your employer branding is a lie. And other way around, of course, if it's a great place to work, you have huge amounts of material for your employer branding. And as a content provider, as opposed to a, like an employer branding messenger, you'll appreciate that more natural content that exists out there, the easier it is to be a great employer brand. 100%. It's, yeah, I think also particularly, particularly around the thing of employer branding has often been criticized. And I think rightly of being quite vanilla and samey and kind of without much kind of edge. So, you know, even things like having those kind of you guys having that statement up there on screen is like, I say not controversial, but it's like having an opinion and making a, a strong, strong statement. So to have something that really stands out is, but naturally is, is, is really, is really important. To that point, there was, there was a talk by Brian Adams of, is it PH Creative? Yes. Yeah. Brian was there. Yeah, absolutely. Brian was, was there. Wasn't he? Yeah. And a big shout out to Google Dave who works there as well. Mm. Hi Dave. To the point of <laughs> being vanilla, he was intentionally talking about when you do your employer branding, what is it that you're not? What is it? What is the stuff that you are that's controversial as opposed to mm work here is a great place to work and lovely people and great benefits and but like what's the stuff that you almost want to scare people with about working here but it's worth it because of x y and z i mm. thought that was an interesting way to also make employer branding not just vanilla yeah 100 percent. i think there's that there's a number of strings to, isn't it it's one about about saying what it what it isn't because often you know because not it, people say that you know often say employer of choice i did a buzz Lightyear post last week i think with be the employer choice. That's your objective. It's like, come on, Woody's like going, what? Come on, employer choice for who? You know, James Ellis talks about that. He's, you know, he talks, he's, you know, talks a lot in the employer branding world around, around that. So, you know, you, you've got to be able to kind of to repel. I think Brian talks about repelling people. Yeah, you know, that's, 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 that's for sure. But also if you get your, if you get your people just to talk, that's the thing. That was my, I think my point about in the conference, it feels like a long time ago in Belgrade, but it was this thing about just get your people to talk and actually then that realness comes, you know, comes through that authenticity, you know, comes through, but go, going back to the, going back to the, the shitness kind of thinking, <laughs> so to speak, you remember you remember we, we met the day before. Because we were staying yes. in the hotel and had a you know a nice meal and a few you know a few drinks and you were saying about you were in the world of like employee experience employee engagement and I thought mm, I'm coming to an employer brand conference and there's that feeling of that well is it the right place to be and I'm like yeah absolutely is the right right place to be you know so what was your kind of apprehension I suppose about that that relationship between employer branding and, and what you do. Sure. So I've, I've spoken at many HR conferences and the message, I remember the first time I delivered the chief joint officer message, just when I was in the middle of that role I was a bit apprehensive because like, I've never spoken at a conference. I'm not an HR person, right? Officially mm -hmm. never been through the whole HR mill. Yeah. But the message went down super well and a lot of H so basically maybe to give it a bit of flavor, the chief joint officer role, the vision that I painted for myself and for the role was that to create a place to work where people wake up on a Monday morning and can't wait to go back to work to make a difference. Yeah. So that's the kind of strap line vision that I came up with. And two things happened when I first talked to an HR conference. First thing, when I, when I had my, that happy Monday slide, not the happy Mondays, yeah. so, although, yeah, on Spotify or your favorite <laughs> music <laughs> streaming of choice. <laughs> yeah. And I put happy one like this happy Monday vision on the wall behind me, and I gave that line, and I was shocked because people started laughing. There was laughter. Oh in wow! Okay. In that moment, I in that, I didn't know what to do, but I just went, "Oh, wow! That's how far we've." fallen or that's how bad things are when an hr crowd listens to the concept of possibly enjoying your work and laughs at it mm. laughs yeah. at 
that that could even be possible. An ironic, cynical laugh, put it that way. Yes. So that's one thing that happened, which surprised me. And then the other thing was that after I'd given the message all about then listening and not being bothered by all the HR admin and legal and whatever stuff, but just focusing on that vision and, and doing things to make a difference. I literally had people come up to me afterwards in tears. Like a lot of people came up to me and said, great, and uh, thank you. And one or two in tears to say, okay, wow. Thank you for reminding me of why I got into HR in the first place. Anyway, love it. No, that's great. Love it. Yeah. Sharif, I'd say that it's not just to blow my own trumpet, if you'll pardon the turn of phrase, but it's also just to show that we sometimes forget why we're really doing our jobs, right? And I often forget the purpose of why we started doing it. And for everyone out there, please, if you think you've lost it, try and refind it. Mm. I felt very much in the comfort zone in HR conferences. And then I got invited to present employer branding, which again, not an HR person. My knowledge of what HR branding is, is probably as good as your business people in your organization out there. Right. I knew it. I know what it is. I know it exists, uh, but I'm not an expert at all. So I'm not an expert at all. And then you ask me to speak at this conference where, where I have no expertise in the subject matter and I'm coming from a completely different angle. So when I first heard about it, yeah. I assume there's a room full of experts and I'm standing on stage, let's call it imposter syndrome in theory, <laughs> standing on stage going, uh, what is there that I can teach you or talk to you about or inspire you with? But then of course, throughout the process, as I started asking people, and I, I think I even put a LinkedIn post out about it. Of course, it started to become clear as you rightly told me in that smoky hotel bar restaurant the night before. Oh, yes. The event, yeah. there is interdependency that cannot, that cannot be underestimated. And so thank you for giving me as well. Maybe that, that little extra confidence boost the night before to go for it in the graveyard slot at the end of the day. Yeah, no, it was great. It was great. It was a great talk, definitely. And yeah, it was really good. Good way to see, see, see us through to the end of the, you know, the, the first day then. So I, I saw on LinkedIn a few times, you know, there's you in a location. I think the last one I saw was on a, a fake airport terminal <laughs> or made up air, airport terminal. Another one you, I think you were back in in the UK as well. And you'll do these events such are like one or two days these workshops. So what typically, what, what are the kind of the workshops you do for, for companies in, involved? So we, again, our strap line is bringing people together to build trust, to connect and to co-create a better future. Right. Mm -hmm. And everything we do absolutely fits with that strap line, right? It's not just a marketing strap line. We really live that. In fact, it came out of understanding what it is that we live. Mm -hmm. So what fundamentally we do for most of the time is team building workshops of some shape or form, be that leadership team coaching, be that larger team events. We've even done a whole company events. But we believe that one really important bit about the employee experience is that connection and that building relationships and that building trust and also co-creating a better future meaning let's talk about some of the stuff and in this case let's talk about some of the stuff that makes it a bit shit to work around here mm. and by opening that box finally everyone knows it right? of course we all know what's not ideal about where we work mm. but in that we work in but it's never explicitly spoken about mm. we create space having built the connection and the trust in the group, we then create the space for people to finally, in a trusting environment, talk about the issues that becomes a very productive, instead of a blame thing, oh, well, it's, that's not going well and she's doing that wrong and he's doing that badly. No, it's just a, in a more trusting environment, we create a space where people can talk about that stuff, where they can okay. finally, the elephants in the room are finally there, exposed for all to see, and that does two things. One, finally, we can call what's wrong so that we can start to fix it. But there's also just a big, <clears throat> finally, we've said it. And that creates a whole new space for other stuff, which, which, makes, which makes the team just work better because we finally got it off our chests. Yeah. And of course, a lot of that leadership team coaching. So we're also talking about what's it like to work like as leaders in the organization. I say we've even done that with, with whole companies, with hundreds of people as well, to, to have that cathartic but also productive moment to like talk about what is shit to work around here 
And by the way, just to be clear, we do add a whole heap of positivity in there as well, right? So we do, there's a big bit where people talk about what are you proud of this team for? What are you proud of working here for? So there's a lot of that stuff. So I don't want to make it all seem like it's doom and gloom and only the dark side, but uh, yeah, that's typically what we do. But it's, it's, it's what you said about when you were at the conference and you, you know, you put the Monday slide up, you know, you had people coming to you going, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> it's an element of that, isn't it? Which is just like, just getting it off, getting it, getting it out there and actually getting businesses to think about why they do, why they do what they do what they do. It, yeah. There's now of why yeah. is a big as a big part of what we love about like what's great and what do we need to fix. Yeah. Lovely. And have you seen it kind of from from you know your career and you've seen it when companies are not being their true self, being authentic. You know have you seen kind of the ramifications of that? Don't have to name or see name names or anything, but yeah, it's I been think, the fallout of a company's not getting it right. I think one example is, which is often misused, is company values. Mm. So I've seen this a few times when there's the company values and they're pretty clear what they are. I've, of course, there's those which, which are a bit too fluffy, wishy-washy, and there's those that are nice and clear. But if you've got the company values, and let's say transparency and teamwork, whatever they might be. And it's very clear that the top management's not, not role modeling it, right? That they're keeping information to themselves or they don't put any emphasis on team, but more on individual value or whatever. A lot of employees just get disgruntled and just kind of switch off a bit and go, well, if you can't even role model what we claim we want to be, how can I believe what you, what you say? or what, where we're going, what you're going to do. And I think there's a big credibility issue with leaders that don't role model how things should be around here or how we've claimed it is around here. Uh, every time an employee sees something, and whether it's employer branding, whether it's just a, a town hall or an all hands where the leaders are, but whenever they see a piece of content, whatever form that might take, that just seems disingenuous, that just seems a lie, <laughs> They, you can almost hear them go. Uh, yeah. just, uh, just energy, energy just leaves them a little bit more. Energy leaves yeah. them a bit more. Yeah. And, and potentially they almost feel like they're living a lie, and the, yeah. like themselves. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but the, there is that sense in that direction oh. of yeah. really because that's not what we're really like, and it mm. makes folks on the negatives. Well, that's not, that's not, that's not true. This is really true. And unfortunately that vacuum is normally filled with negativity. Not, that's not true, but this is, <laughs> the only that's true, but this is, and that's, that's a, that's a negative kind of ramification on the existing employees. Every time they see a piece of content, which they perceive as untrue. Well, that content itself is just, you know, also in person where people can be talking, you know, looking at, uh, an event or a town hall or, you know, all sorts where let's just say the, the demotivation just increases that much more. And that kind of reminds me of the, oh, I can't remember the exact percentage. So, <laughs> but it's, I think it's like 81% or 85% of people according to Gallup are, you know, are actively or, or disengaged at work, yeah. you know, or not engaged with their work. And that's like, that's such a massive number and that. Results in like seven or eight trillion dollars in lost productivity. And that kind of reminds me of a conversation I had with so Sean Hager, who is a leadership consultant, good friend actually as well, but he works for legitimate leadership and based in South Africa in the UK. And he talks about trust or talks often about trust. And he was on an episode of, ooh, a few months ago. And he's like, well, ultimately, when you lose that trust, everything else just falls down. Really. Yeah. And, yeah. So that authenticity is of course really they no, really, really important. Yeah, and, and there's, no, there's no spreadsheet in the world that will tell you uh, whether you're losing trust or not, or gaining trust. Yeah. And unfortunately, most businesses are steered by, well, maybe not spreadsheets these days, but certainly financial modeling tools and so many businesses focus on that and they really forget that the human side does add to the bottom line. At the very, of course, it helps you sleep at night, hopefully more easily, but importantly, well, it does, yeah. I mean, if, if you can turn the... Those eight trillion, as you say, into reality just by 
helping people mo you know, be motivated, then yeah, absolutely. It's not much to ask, is it? That people actually at least enjoy their work a bit more and get a bit more fulfillment out of their out of their job. Yeah, and and I don't think any of I don't think any of us would question the concept if you think for yourself. If you're enjoying your work, you're probably more productive. Yeah, exactly. so a lot. I think a lot of leaders go, are people enjoying their work? Well, well then are they doing a good job if they're enjoying it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. That's old school thinking. And yeah, it is embedded in probably people of our generation a little bit, Chris. Yeah, uh, yeah, who, absolutely. Who haven't learned better. And I think that's certainly when I look back to my early management jobs, I probably had that unconsciously in my mind. Um, you know, if they're not fighting away and looking worried and, and kind of battling through then they can't be being productive when when a, a smart face a genuine motivation of waking up on a Monday morning going right let's get this shit done yeah, yeah adds to the bottom line more than oh god here we go again yeah absolutely business critical really is yeah some something we've talked about quite a bit on, on on the podcast that thing about business employer branding being business critical and in touch but naturally by its connection Obviously, what you're talking about is absolutely, just absolutely crucial. So, in the role as Chief Joy Officer, when was that? 2016. So, I don't know where employer branding was, but I hadn't heard of it much back then, that's for sure. I think we kind of stumbled across employer branding by accident, by happy coincidence, yeah. as a consequence of our employee experience stuff. Yeah. So, and you've triggered another thought about the importance of employer branding internally, which I'll now elaborate on. Yeah, nice. We realized that the connection between offices, the connection between teams, especially because it was a global company, was poor. And, and that therefore reduced trust, as you also talk about. Because, of course, it, it was just a name in an email until that, that point. And if this was 2016. It was pre-COVID. It was pre zoom and teams calls all the time there was some skype calls but often video off so yeah. a lot of were faceless and therefore emails saying i need this or you haven't done that it just became very tetchy the whole atmosphere mm. i no i noticed this by like kind of listening in to people as which, which was part one of the chief joint officer role was to listen yeah and we launched an internal workplace app now again in this day and age that doesn't seem that unusual but 2016 it was pretty pretty cutting edge and that's what in fact what my very first talk was about at conference we launched an employee an internal employee engagement app and we launched it with some games and fun and everyone had to put team pictures in and play games and suddenly we gave a face to the company we gave a face to the people and we noticed instantly an imp improvement in how teams worked together especially globally and there was better connection people 90 percent of people use the app every week spontaneously without being prompted okay. Posting content, right? Posting content. It was like a, uh, it was great. And then what happened was people started to tell their friends. <laughs> Especially yeah. in India, right? Which is where a lot of the people were. They would tell their friends, we've got a chief toy officer and, and look at our app. And a few people would even then post stuff on LinkedIn and said, hey, here's our cool app and here's what we're doing. Because they were just proud of it, right? They were just literally proud of it. Of course, mm -hmm. they meant then going to conferences and talk about it, about what was really happening. And all these smiley faces in the app and all these stories we could tell and lovely. And it ended up being authentic employer branding without it meaning to be, that wasn't the original plan. The plan was originally for the people in the company because they were so proud of it. And by the way, this is where the employer branding then comes full circle and feeds back into the company. Every, everyone was really proud of working in this company because we had this cool stuff. Because we had this connection, because we had these cool things, because we could have fun together, because, because, because it ended up binding people. We reduced churn and employee turnover from like 20% a year to about eight. Brilliant. There was benefits internally. It, was, it wasn't just recruiting externally, although it did help a bit of that. It's just the company where they got joy off soon, isn't it? But it absolutely helped internally as well. So I don't know if that kind of answers your question about the connection, but it's a story that just came to me, which I think yeah. I think it's the picture quite well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think it's, you know, back in, was it 20, 2016, I'd say that there were definitely 
employer brand roles, or dare I say it, teams. Teams were maybe a bit of a stretch in 2016, but, you know, there were definitely more out there. It was, it was becoming, a, I think, becoming more kind of business mainstream employer branding around 2016. And I think what I typically hear and what I've experienced is, is that, you know, is, is you've got like one person or, you know, very small teams that are, you know, given the employer branding piece to deal with. And they often have too much. In fact, I got a post, a meme coming out soon. <laughs> In fact, it would have dropped already. <laughs> I got this meme of a, one of those, someone on a bicycle with loads of boxes on them, surrounding them. And they're smiling. It's like, it's about the employer branding job description. Everything's yeah. fine. <laughs> you know? But the point is, is, is employer branding, I think still is, I think now is, is, it's definitely reaching some sort of maturity or mainstream maturity. Sure. I think it's still, there's lots of discussion around where it, where it sits. And, you know, I think there is a, some people say, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter where it sits, but I think because of what we've been talking about, I won't be the first person to say this, but it's good to reiterate it is because of what you've been talking about is actually, I think it's fair enough to say that an employer branding function is actually well suited to be really connected with with communications, internal communications, because between the two of them, if they can then plug into what's going on in the organization, but also do the kind of things that you've been talking about to make sure that actually there isn't that shit. There's that truthness. There's that, you know, authenticity, dare I say it, in what's coming out. It all becomes more natural. Like you, like you, you did from what, 20% to 8%. That's just brilliant. So it's just by connecting it more with the, the internal comm side of things, the employee engagement side of things. Correct. Surely will make life a lot easier. Correct. And, and on the initial quote that you look like so much, you know, if it's a shit place to work, your employee branding's a lie. There's two parts of a sentence, right? Shit place, employer branding. Well, if we can bring the two together and say, well, yeah, you know, let's, Let's work on making it a great place to work. And then we can, by definition, communicate it. Exactly. Then, yeah, exactly. then those two things working hand in hand, and which is why, yeah, internal comms, employee experience, whatever you wish to call it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stick employer branding in the pure recruitment arm or wherever it currently might sit. Cause yeah. otherwise it will just get pitching holders. You're just trying to, you know, get people in to recruit them as opposed to, are you telling a story? That's the truth. Absolutely. The two need to be connected and i think the fact that if you had employer brands more embedded ingrained in in the internal comms the employee engagement side of things there actually is that thing about well actually there is a benefit to us because we're going to be recruiting more people as well as retaining more people so there's maybe a a, a stronger rationale for doing more internal comms employee engagement activity because it's like look how much it costs us to to hire somebody, look how much it costs us to replace somebody. We know the numbers are like, are like absolutely massive. And also with, I did a post a few days ago about employer branding. I think, I think you gave it a like, cheers man, thank you. Which is about employer branding. Let's think, think more like a journalist. Yes. Yeah. That, think was, about, that was it's great. just, it's like something. Something I really believe very passionately about is like just have that, and you don't have to be a journalist to think like a journalist. You just empathy is really important. I've had an episode with Pretty Sonny about ep- empathy and employer brand a few months ago, but I think again that kind of more embedding with internal comms and employee experience and engagement, whatever you want to call it, I think makes employer branding more journalistic because we're not just saying. Can you please take this piece of branding and share with people? You know, or if even if you are super engaged on LinkedIn, can you just say how great the company is? No, that's that's not it. You kind of you just want people to do what they do, and that's for it to be amplified naturally externally because they want to be in front of camera talking to somebody about it, or they want to have a conversation that can be recorded. You know, that passion comes through. But anyway, so that that relationship is very very important. So. I'll stop gassing on and let's just finish off with classic takeaway. So based on what we're talking about, someone is listening, probably in an employer branding and, you know, HR talent acquisition role. Um, 
what should, what advice would you give them in terms of like, trying to address the things that we've been talking about? I think the trick is there's already loads of great content out there, or more importantly, find opportunities where there is authentic, natural content. And the tip I gave it at the conference, surfing all the way back there now again, was yeah, nice. your all company events or, you know, when you, when you get as many people together as possible in your organization or within your team, make those events engaging, inspiring, interactive, meaningful, not just eight hours of death by PowerPoint and then a few beers. Yeah. yeah. Like, like make those experiences a bit like I talked about before about how we do workshops with people. Like make them interactive, engaging, make them things where we can talk about what we're proud of and what we can fix mm. and as well as mm. the information sharing. And yeah. then we'll have such amazing photos, testimonials of people saying, what a wonderful place, what a great event that just get people to give you their photos <laughs> or you know, yeah. take photos, videos of that event. And you'll see naturally, authentically happy, smiley faces talking about how cool is it here? So yeah. One tip I can give you to take away, if your big team or kind of company events aren't that meaningful and inspiring, make them so. And then when they are, great opportunity to just take some authentic content and get out there. Yeah, lovely. Good stuff. Cheers, Max. So it's good to, good to catch up after a while. I know we see each other on LinkedIn quite a bit, you know, but yeah, as, as we said at the beginning, like Belgrade seems like a, quite a long, a long time ago. So, it so yeah, like, I really appreciate your time. It seems like many awards dinners ago if, if LinkedIn's anything to go back. <laughs> yeah, there's not, yeah, there's not, not many, there's no awards in the pipeline just yet, but some, yeah, we're, we're working on that. So you're, you're not going to be seeing a few in link award posts for, for a while. Not, uh, nothing to worry about. I thought we were just always wearing a tux. Anyway, all good. Cheers. Bye now.